The first thing you'll need is Docker. Docker will allow us to run both Hasura and our database inside of a container. The next thing you'll also need is the Hasura console. The Hasura console can be downloaded for Linux, Mac, or Windows with these commands here, or you can additionally use npm. And finally, we'll need to pick our flavor of Docker Compose or some other method to get it running locally. We're gonna pick Docker Compose and we'll grab this docker-compose.yaml. I've uncommented and changed our local admin secret just so that it mimics production a little better. Locally, it won't really matter. Whatever this thing is, you can make it as secret or not secret as you want. With our Docker Compose setup, we need to actually create our Hasura project, which is why we installed the Hasura CLI. What we can do here is just type Hasura init inside of the project directory. And then it'll ask us what we name our project. We'll just call it Hasura. And away we go. We've now created a Hasura folder with a config, database seeds, migrations, and metadata ready to uh, spin up our project. To make life a little bit easier for us, inside of our config, we're going to add our admin secret so that whenever we run Hasura console, we don't have to type it in. So we'll say admin secret is admin secret. With our project now spun up and our Docker Compose, we are now ready to go. So we'll spin up the Docker Compose with Docker Compose up-d to get all of our containers running. So it'll run Postgres and then it'll run GraphQL Engine. And now we're ready to go into the Hasura console and start making changes. To do that, we'll cd into the Hasura directory and we'll just type Hasura console. If we didn't add the admin secret into the config.yaml, we would have to have added admin secret like so. And because of that, we can just omit that and just press Hasura console and it will spin up the Hasura console and we are ready to go. One final thing to do is to add a database to our Hasura. Hasura now can run without a database connected. And so in order to do that, we're going to need to add a database to our environment variables for Hasura. So we can add a database URL and it can be the exact same one because you can add multiple databases of multiple types and then just store the permissions in a specific database that you want. So now we save that and we will turn off the Sura console, rerun docker compose up dash D. It'll recreate our GraphQL engine with the database URL as the environment variable. Now that that's recreated, we can reopen our Hasura console. Now that we're in the console, we can go to data and say connect to database. We'll then call our default database default and we will load it from an environment variable and we'll say database URL because that is the name we have given our environment variable. We'll then connect to our database and now we have our database that we can start adding tables to. And finally, if we go take a peek in our metadata you can see that it's saved off, named, defaults, kind, Postgres, and will load from an environment variable so that when we apply this metadata in staging or production, it'll use the right database for the right environment.